Mark from Vortec Pro. Today we're going to talk about something that's pretty important. Uh, we're going to talk about the housing war on the cam tunnel on these production 454 blocks. Let's get into a little scenario here. Let's say you went out and you found the perfect core. You tore it down, you had it hot tanked. The machine shop bored and decked it and line honed it and has it all ready and you're getting ready to put the cam bearings in it and uh, one of the cam bearings goes in loose. Well a lot of times they probably won't tell you but now you have an issue and it's pretty common on these blocks. The housing bore can get big sometimes it's actually small but we're going to show you how you deal with it, how you check it, how you fix it and get the clearances right. Really important and you want to do it, you want to check this cam tunnel right when that block after it's magna flexed. This block here is a customer's block. We already know it had a cam tunnel problem. But we decided to use this block because it was a beautiful cast. It had really thick cylinders. Really nice block except for one thing. The cam tunnel's not right. Now, a lot of people probably just run it, but I'm telling you it's Controlling oil leaks in these motors has really become a big deal. A lot of people are really focused in on that. And we are in my shop. I mean, uh, you definitely, definitely want to get the clearances right to control the oil. So first, we're going to talk about the block castings. The main blocks we use in my shop are a 289 casting, a 959, and a 445. And you got your 512 and you got the 427 blocks earlier in the nose. Those aren't mainstream, so we're not, we don't have a lot of, lot of uh, experience with the cam tunnel on those. But I will tell you that the 289 casting and the 959 are the two problem childs usually. 445 block, the cam tunnel is usually fairly close to being within spec. So on a cam, on a, on a block that measures out close to in, in spec, what we'll do is we'll use a coated, a coated cam bearing to help tighten up the clearance. Can you can you get that? So let's use a coated cam bearing. It if the clearance, if the housing bores are measured correctly. If they're not, and they don't, a lot of times I'll show. We're going to show you how to fix it. Here we go. Okay. These are the specs for the cam tunnel. This is the number 5 journal, the number 4 journal, the number 3 journal, the number 2 journal, and the number 1 cam bearing housing bore. Okay, if you look at these specs, you can see there's a thousandth difference from the low to the high side of the spec. Very rarely does a factory cam tunnel come in on the low side of the spec. So what we're looking for is the high side of the spec to see how close it is to this number all the way up through, through the housing bore. And to measure, this is what we use. Okay, what we have here is a sun and dial bore gauge, dial bore gauge setting fixture. And these are the standards you use for different diameters that you would want to set this bore gauge up at. It reads in tenths of a thousands. We've set this dial bore gauge for the number two and five journal, which is two one thirty and five tenths. This gauge, each number is a thousandth. Each slash between the numbers is a tenth of a thousandth, so it's a tenth reader. Okay, we're going into measure the number two cam tunnel housing bore. Okay, we're on this side of the of the oil hole and we're about five tenths over the high. Now let's get on the other side of the oil hole. We're about five tenths over there too. So what we'll do in this case I mean that's pretty common 
being five tenths over the high is not, not the end of the world. So what we'll do is we'll use a coated cam bearing on this hole to help tighten up the clearance. So now we know that the number two housing board and number five are supposed to be the same dimension. So we're going to go back and measure number five. Okay, we're coming into the number five cam tunnel housing bore, which is the rear. And number four is, is usually a problem on these, is where you'll have problems. Okay, we're four thousandths over the high side of the spec. This is where your cam bearing would go in loose and cause an oil leak. Okay, so let's measure on the other side of the oil hole. And we're basically four thousandths big there too. Okay, so we know that the number two cam, t cam tunnel housing bore is going to be usable with a coated bearing. We're going to have to make a cam bearing for this number five journal. And we're going to show you how we did that, do that here in a minute. But we still need to measure three and four and number one. So we're going to reset the dial bore gauge for the three and four cam tunnel housing bore. Okay, we've gone back and reset the dial bore gauge to two, two inch, 120 thousandths and five tenths. So we can measure the three and four housing bore, cam tunnel that is. Okay. We're running two thousands over the high on that side of the oil hole, and let's move to the back of the oil hole. About the same. Hold on here, let me. Yeah, right there. Two thousands over the spec. Okay, now we're going to go into housing board number four. Hold on here, we're getting an oil hole. So we're about two and five tenths of a thousandths over the high on that side of the oil hole. So let's get on the other side of the oil hole. And we got eh, roughly two and a half, two and five tenths over there. So we're going to have to do something with the three and four housing bore. Okay, we've reset the dial bore gauge to two one forty and five tenths. The number one housing bore is the biggest housing bore of the five. So let's measure it and see what we got. We got about four tenths. Let me measure it on the other side of the oil hole. About four tenths. Okay, on number one we were about four tenths over the high. On number two we were about six tenths over the high. And on number three we were two thousandths big. That one we'll have to make a bearing for. And on number four we were two and a half thousandths over the high. We'll have to make a bearing there. And five, always the problem child, four thousandths big. So you could see where this would cause an, cause excessive an excessive oil leak. So now we're going to show you how you how you make these bearings. Okay, to make these custom cam bearings, we start with the number one cam bearing because it's bigger than the other four cam bearings behind it. Okay, we'll put this on an expandable mandrel and we'll grind it on the crank grinder, and we'll grind it for about four thousandths press over our measured housing bore that we've already measured. And you can look at it and see the finish on it. It's actually better than, better than it comes from the factory after we've ground it. Now we'll show you how we grind it.
Okay, you can see that this is our number four cam bearing made out of a number one cam bearing. You can see right here we've got about four and a half thousandths press from what we've ground it to to what the housing bore is. This will give us the right of well clearance.